How much of the child's reaction do you think is from just their personality they were born with as opposed to how they're being influenced by the parents? So I think it's a combination. Um, sometimes there are children with temperaments that are a little bit more anxious to begin with, a okay. little bit more clingy, but also parents can produce that behavior in their child if they're kind of unpredictable in their parenting, meaning sometimes they are there, they're very sensitive to their child, and other times they're nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes parents unwittingly provoke this type of attachment style in their child. For example, very busy parents, you know, they're actually working very hard to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. But as a little child, you don't realize that your parent was gone for 10 hours because they right. were working. Right. So when they're home, they're actually pretty engaged with you and they are there to meet your needs. But then there's other days where they come home and they're exhausted. Mm -hmm. And so then you have a lot of needs and the parent says, you know what, I just need a few minutes alone. And then they take that to personal offense. Yes. And so you can see how sometimes very well-meaning parents can accidentally cultivate a preoccupied child um, just because, again, of their own needs and them being busy. Right. Oftentimes, children who are anxiously preoccupied throughout their life, they get sort of re-experiences that strengthen that type of attachment style, like maybe the relationship that they choose as adults, they keep right. choosing dismissive partners or partners who can't meet their needs. And so then they keep reinforcing that belief about themselves that maybe they're unlovable and they don't want to like sit with that. And that's why they have a hard time being alone. So with no awareness, are we most likely to mimic the attachment style we were raised Yes. In? Okay. Yes. And I think that there's a theory that you end up seeking partners that are kind of similar to your parents. And you basically reenact the same thing over and over again, whether it's some type of a trauma or not. Uh -huh. And so if you were a child who felt like you were constantly reaching for your parent for support and they were sometimes there and sometimes not, as adults, you're attracted to people who also sort of have those tendencies where right. they kind of get busy with their own lives. And again, maybe they love you, but you know, they just don't have a lot of bandwidth to mm -hmm. be dealing with your insecurities all the time. And so I don't really find, for example, that many, many people who have the preoccupied attachment style actually end up being with each other. Although sometimes that does happen. They tend to seek out partners that are different from them in terms of their attachment styles and oftentimes replicating the parenting style of their caregivers. Got it. Now, it's important to mention here, though, that there's not just one cause for any of those. I mean, right. it can be a hodgepodge of, of things, but I think it helps people kind of see where what parts of their history might be influencing their current behavior today. Absolutely. And as adults, these individuals will oftentimes have a great difficulty navigating relationships. They tend to ask for a lot from their partners in terms of nurturance. In some ways, they don't have a stable self-esteem internally, so they have to keep getting validation from people. And it's like almost a few minutes later, they forgot that validation. They have to seek it again. Mm. So oftentimes these individuals will end up in relationships in which they're not very happy. They've given up all kinds of their own needs and wants to satisfy the other person's needs and wants, and they still feel like they're left out in the cold. And these individuals are also more at risk for abusive relationships because, again, their need for nurturance is so high that they're willing to succumb themselves to extremely distressing situations to not be alone. And these individuals, oftentimes the adults, you'll see them kind of hop from relationship to relationship. They're serial daters. They have a hard time being alone. And when they're alone, they become very distressed. And it goes for friendships as well. So they prefer to be with their friends instead of by themselves. And they will put themselves in uncomfortable situations just to not be alone. So mm -hmm. even if all of their friends are doing something that they really don't want to do, they'll go along with the group as opposed to staying home alone. How does a parent foster more of that secure attachment within their child, especially when the child is showing really uh, intense anxiety mm -hmm. and almost a temper tantrum when that parent leaves. Yeah, and this is a good question because there is an interaction between the parents and the child's temperament, right? So temperament is something that we think of as innate. You know, certain children, they're just more smiley, they just make mm -hmm. more eye contact with people around them, other children are not, they're more fussy. And these things relate to temperament, it's sort of thought to be something that's kind of inborn. And so I think in general, parents 
sometimes foster whatever they see in front of them. So if there's a child whose temperament is more clingy and anxious, perhaps the mother will also reflect more anxiety. Like, oh my gosh, are right. they going to be okay on their own? Maybe I shouldn't go out on date night with my husband because what if my child needs me? But actually, in some ways, that reinforces the anxiety right. in your child, right? Because right. children are actually quite intuitive and they can sense emotions in their caregivers, right? And so I, I think it's interesting because when you see that dynamic, you can kind of see that almost it's like a chicken and egg syndrome uh -huh. after a while. Uh -huh. So so what's really happening here? And so I think as parents, you have to monitor your own feelings, irrespective of your child's temperament in some ways. It's sort of like, okay, the child is acting very anxious. That brings up a lot of anxiety in me. So in some ways, you have to modulate your own emotions and appear more calm right. so that the child can really learn from that and say, oh, maybe there's nothing to be anxious about. I yeah. need to start to learn how to self-soothe those feelings. Yes. And so I think some of it is the parents being really attuned to that and still maintaining structure despite your child's temperament.